the thing that I think might not as valuable as Cap being back, but just as valuable as a Kobe being back in the lineup. And you saw it already with the defense last night. Honestly, like you can, I can barely say that I've seen the def- the the. The Wolves play good defense, but last night there was a stretch there. They played some great defense. Guys, the fourth quarter, they held the Spurs to 19 points, and there was a stretch, I think, in the second or third quarter where we had our all-defense lineup out with um, Rubio, Akogi, I think Culver was out there, um, Vanderbilt, and Ed Davis, and no one could score. But (laughs) we did not let them – we went like – Two for 11 from the field, but we held them to like one for 10 or one for nine because we got steals and stuff. That lineup is was really good on defense, and it just shows. We wouldn't have won that game without Josh Kogi, I don't think. With his, no. Without his defensive play and without his, his leadership and just his all-around presence on the court, I don't think we win that game because what did we beat them by, eight? Yeah. They for sure would have scored more than eight points without Josh Kogi on the floor. So, yeah, so you were talking about Vanderbilt's, like, what is it, points saved or something? So, I just saw a stat on Instagram, and out of third year... Slightly, slowly bring her up. Out of third year players, Jared Vanderbilt has... There we go. Sorry, guys. We're having a lot of issues in the car right yeah, now. Yeah, we need to get, like, a mount or something. I mean, if, if, if we uh, if we, if ever we decide to take the Timberwolves stock mobile. Yeah, but honestly, I think it was out of all third-year players, he was top three in, like, defensive point and points saved. So that probably takes into account blocks, steals, good defense. So that just shows he's a good de- he's a good post defender, which is exactly what we need. Well, yeah, well, so what I was thinking is what do you think a Kobe – Say. He's got to have one of the highest. Yeah. Well, I don't know because he guards a lot of high scores. High scores. So I don't know what his stats are. So, be dude, like. he's really incognito. Like, you, his impact is so much bigger than the stat sheet, and it's probably so much bigger than the analytics can even show. No, he's. you look at his box score last night of six points, like three rebounds and two assists or whatever, you think such a mediocre game. But, guys, like, his plus minus was definitely above 10. Um, his, his, you, you just have to watch. You have to really key in on him. That's a red light. That's a big red light. And Peyton just ran a big red light. I, I, it's all for the video. It's man. all for the video, but hopefully there's no police around. But, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't show up on the stat sheet, whatever he does. But next time you see him guarding, like, a uh, – I don't know who he's going to guard against the Grizzlies. Maybe, like, Dylan Brooks or something. Yeah. But next time, watch him just – Watch him guard. Watch him get through screens. Watch him keep his man in front of him. And watch him play good interior defense. And you'll see what we're talking about and why he's such a big impact. He's kind of one of those players that the old timers are like, you know, they don't teach him like that anymore. And, like, that's kind of what I fear about um, getting too analytical and, like, fall and believing too much in analytics. It's kind of a thing with – that's a thing with baseball, too. Yeah. Like, some coaches are so analytical-based that, like, you just, like – Josh Kobe, you can't really see that on the stage. At some point, you just got to play the game and play hard, and I think that's what analytics don't show. No. But I think it's, it's great for the sport, too. But I think oh. we also just got to give it the eye. You can give it the eye test, and you can just see he makes an impact on the court. And so does our Dennis, Dennis Rodman Vanderbilt.